welcome to the game. We have got a good one in store for you. Coming to you from Amity Stadium. Our matchup today features the Sharks. They'll be competing against the Gunslingers. I'm Dan Stevens, and joining me, as always, is Peter O'Keefe. Let's have a look at each team's featured performance. Raymond Berry and Leroy Selman get it done for the Gunslingers. Truly, these are a couple of the finest players ever to play the game of football. And the rest of the team ain't half bad either. But their opponent is packed with talent as well. Joe Montana and James Lofton get it done for the Sharks. I've seen some talent in my day, Dan, but this really takes the cake. The passing that's going to be on display will be ridiculous. Okay, Peter, it's time for the coin toss. Let's listen in. Hey, kid, let's do this. Gentlemen, please make your call. We want heads. Heads it is. We want the ball. The Gunslinger have won the toss and select to receive. O'Brien kicks off and the game is underway. Upchurch is coming out with it. Ground to a halt at the 20. That was a pressure, baby! I can't do it good! The Gunslingers' offense takes the field, and they will start at their own 20-yard line. Wallace tips it away on the coverage, incomplete. Nicholas Wallace anticipated the trajectory of that pass and stuck his hand in at the last moment. Great play. back to the line of scrimmage. Nice job eliminating any forward progress on that play. That will bring up a third and long. Third down, 10 yards to go. Makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. Fourth down coming up. Kenyatta Cumbie anticipated the trajectory of that pass and stuck his hand in at the last moment. Great play. Well, the D holds tight on third and long and forces an incompletion. That was a good call by the defensive coordinator. Oh, it sure was. Perfect D for that situation. And it will bring up fourth down. Lee lines up to punt after the three and out. Lee gets the ball and punts it away. Megan deals the punt at the 38. Blocked down at the 41. Dave Megan didn't have much room to work with back there. The special team squad made sure he couldn't respond to that really nice punt. The Sharks send their offense out on the field and will start this drive at their 41-yard line. Lofton reels in the football and gets past the markers for a first down. James Lofton plays man-to-man, to man, to man, to man. With three defenders, still makes the catch. What a player. A well-designed play there, Peter, and they will move the chains. And let me tell you, Dan, hearing those chains move is one of the best sounds in the game for an offense. First down from the eye. Run 
Montana throws a bullet to the flat, and he connects for a pickup of four on the play. Michael Hufkin made the grab as the coverage seemed like they were in another world. Whose man is he? They move the ball, and it will be second down. Second and five from the Gunslingers, 42 yards. Canadale loses two, and that will bring up third down. Am I too hot for you, baby? Big stop, baby. Great tackle. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling good now. Hey. Third and seven from the Gunslingers, 34 yards. Montana fires this one over the middle, and they get the first on third and long. Joe Montana has a knack for sticking square pegs through round holes when it comes to completing a tough pass. Third and long, and they get the big play to convert. What do you think of that, Peter? I love it. That's what football is all about, making the big plays when you need to, and you can't coach that. First down, two wideouts on the field. Williamson pulls it in right side, and he's just barely past the markers for a first. Bobby Williamson threw three men around him, but was still able to make the catch. That, that's just criminal. Montana throws a bullet, and the catch is made at the 11. Chase down at the 4. It'll be first and goal. He picks up 15 on the play. First down, good. Brent Jones is going to make the catch here, but doesn't stop after that. He snares it and play for more. First and goal. Well, we got an excellent running tandem in the backfield, Dan. Watch out for them here. Canadeo catches it in the flat and loses yards on that one. Tony Canadeo didn't quite get back to the line on that run and goes out of bounds. They couldn't force this one across the line, and so that'll bring up second down. Brick wall, guys! Brick wall! We're stopping him right here, right now. Oh. Second and goal. Montana rifles it out left side, and it's tipped. Incomplete. McAllister Cody couldn't have read that play any better if it was tattooed on the inside of his helmet. On second down, they try for the first, but it's played well by the defense. That will bring up third down. Nice pressure that time. Third and goal. Williamson will get the handoff and gets in for the score. Let's get more. Come on. This is a great run, Dan. Look at the yards he chews up. Peter, he had a great jump off the line. He was in fifth gear before the defense could even react. Motored for some easy yards. They take the lead on that touchdown, Peter, and they have to be happy with their performance on that drive. Yeah, great calls and great execution. the point after and it's good
O'Brien crushes this one deep. Upchurch downs it for a touchback. The Gunslingers, stalled early last drive, will have to see what happens here. We'll start at their own 20-yard line. Fire gets the sack at the 17. Marchetti takes him down back at the 15. Gino Marchetti keeps his man from getting back to the line. Let's watch. Pow! Oh, that's got to hurt. That will be two losses in a row. Great reads by the D on the last plays, Dan. Oh, let's watch this. Five wide out versus a D that is wisely loaded up on DBs. Brody lets it go here, and it's complete at the 42, finally stopped at the 47. First down. Rick Upchurch faces down two defenders and comes away with the football. Oh, nice catch. First time they've gone deep today, and they nailed it. That's a huge boost this early, Dan. But there's a lot of game left to play, and I'm sure the defense is already looking to make adjustments. For a short loss. Means gets the cross and runs into traffic. Tackled at the 42. Green tags the missile and he's looking for room. Hung it down at the 46. Powell will be credited with the tackle. It'll be fourth down. Lee lines up for the punt. Lee gets the ball and punts it away. Let the punt bounce for a touchback. Eric Lee saw his kick go squirrely on him for a touchback. <laughs> Tough luck. The Sharks got into the end zone last time they had it, and they're looking to do it again. They'll start at their own 20-yard line. Canadeo catches it in the flat and tackled at the 23. On the reception, Cody credited with the tackle. Second down with a split backfield. Ball at the 23 yard. Montana throws a big high lob and it's tipped incomplete. Scott Studwell anticipated the trajectory of that pass and stuck his hand in at the last moment. Great play. Big one, boys. We need to stop. Hype it up. Hype it up. Great. 
Third and seven from your Sharks, 23 yards. First on third and long. Joe Montana makes a terrific completion in double coverage here. Wow, now that is one confident QB. His first huge connection of the day was two inches from the sun, I swear. All right, settle down. Slight exaggeration there, big guy. All right, that was a big play. This defense better watch themselves. A line has just been drawn. Montana throws this on a rope, and it's tipped incomplete. Corey Rakuch turned his hips to get into position and tipped that ball away. Solid coverage. That had potential for some yards, Peter, but the defense was on top of it and shut it down. Good denial there. Second down coming up. Second down, oh. two receivers to the left. From the Gunslingers, 48 yards. for a first down. Is this a great drive or what? The gunslinger. Montana throws this one right sideline and it's tipped incomplete. White Jacobs anticipated the trajectory of that pass and stuck his hand in at the last moment. That was the fourth time they've swatted the ball out of the air and the offense is looking frustrated. The D is showing excellent fundamentals right here. Second and ten. a game of seven on the play. Brent Jones drew three men on the D, but is still able to make the catch. Way to find the hole, settle in, and make a great catch. This guy can really twist up the coverage in that short area. That's right, Dan. Those quick routes have been open for him all day. Obviously, that's what the defense wants to give him. Third down with the tight end right. Faces him down in the backfield, and that takes them even farther away from the marker. That will bring up fourth down. Ben Clay read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. Peter, with that stop, they have pushed them out of field goal range. Oh, what a big play. O'Brien boots it from 47 yards out, and he knocks it through the uprights. Michael O'Brien sends it whizzing between the goal posts for a field goal straight down the pike. O'Brien boots the heck out of this one. Upchurch pounds it in the end zone for a touchback. The Gunslingers have had some trouble moving the ball recently. We'll see what they do on this drive that starts at their own 20-yard line. Team 
Davis gains five on the play, and that brings up second down. A pick up of five on the play. Butler credited with the tackle. Second and five. Gets the call again, and he gains about three yards. Third and two from the Lambert will get the carry on third down and is dropped short of the marker. That will bring up fourth down. Zach Underwood brought down the ball carrier before the markers. There was some gain there, but not enough for the first. The defense's back was against the wall and they rose to the challenge, Peter. Yeah, Dan, that's great D. They had to make a stand here and they stood together. It will be fourth down. Lee lines up to punt after the three and out. Lee takes the long snap and punts it away. Megan takes it at the 30. Round to a halt at the 36. You guys don't want to deal with me and the open field. The Sharks came away with three last time out and are looking for more. They'll start this drive at their 36-yard line. No dice, and it falls incomplete. Brent Jones put himself in the right place back there coming across the middle, but... The catch was elusive, no dice. Potential for a quick first down, but no, they cannot hook up the pass. You can take a shot in that situation, and it's really not going to hurt you. That's a good call. Second That'll bring up second oh, down. Sharks, 36 yard line. That will bring up third down. Third down, two tight ends in the game. Ball up at 44 yards. Studwell makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. We have a penalty marker on the play. Let's get the call from the field. Neutral zone infraction. Number 63, defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Leroy Salmon was lined up on the ball, and the ref called him on it. That's a neutral zone infraction. First and ten. Ball at the 49 yard line. Watch the cover! Watch the cover! Land, land, land! Wing back! Wing back! <laughs> Lacouch tackles him for a short loss. Corey Lacouch would not be denied and dropped him for a huge loss. Big play. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. about three. Keith Millard read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. Good defense that's forced two losses in a row. 
third and 13 from Will Sharks 46 yard line. Montana fires this one over the middle and it's caught at the 50. Tackled at the 47. Hart will be credited with the tackle. That will bring up fourth down. Barker gets ready to Will punt it away. And selected to punt. Upchurch is D2C. Let's go, y'all. Let's go, let's go. Barker takes the snap and punts it away. The Gunslingers take the field, and their running game has yet to get on track. We'll see if it happens here as we start it at their own four-yard line. Means gets his seventh carry of the game. Half wide right, finally stopped at the 16. First down. Natron Means has a great offensive line in front of him. They made that play happen. Yep, those blockers opened up the hole for him. A huge game. First down, three wideouts in the game. up second down Goes into the left sideline and it's caught at the 35. Finally gets out of bounds at the 41. First down. John Brody looks one way, then shoots it across the field. You can see the passing lanes change as this play develops. Yeah, Dan, he anticipates that and times it out perfectly. Great pass, Peter, and he's having a terrific day so far. You bet so far he's got 72 yards and no interceptions. He threw that one, and that will be an incomplete pass. Second down, tight end to the left. That'll do it for quarter number one. The Sharks enjoying the lead 10 to nothing. Wilkins. 
Anderson. Jackson way back at the 37. Fourth down coming up. Eric Wilkerson gets to his man in the backfield for a big loss. I don't know what happened to the protection. Let's have a look. You know, Dan, it's all about focus and persistence. He was not going to let that quarterback get that pass off. He gets the assist, and he now has one half of a sack for the game. Lee gets ready to punt it away. Gets the snap and punts it away. Maggot deals the punt at the 20. Tackled at the 25. Now that's what I like to see. Nice coverage, guys. The Sharks come out on off, and they are well ahead. They'll start this drive at their own 25-yard line. Lofton catches it over the middle, and that's a gain of seven on the play. James Lofton easily overcomes the double coverage to nab the football. Perfect synchronization by the quarterback and the receiver. Way to get open. Peter, what a nice pickup to get them into a second and short second and situation. Short. Yeah, great play, and now they have a bunch of options on what to try next. advantage of some really good blocking there on that last run. When you get the initial surge like that, good things happen, especially in the ground game. Nice second down call, and they will move the chain. On offense, it was always a plus to avoid third down altogether, just like that. Lofton falls in the pass and he tries to get free. Finally stopped the 39. Joe Montana is a quarterback who doesn't feel he has to force the issue. Yeah, he made a good, quick decision to fire the football right in there. And Dan, in his mind, nothing was going to stop him from completing that pass, unless, of course, it was intercepted. You know, I love what this passing scheme accomplishes. Game in and game out. We're seeing the steam coming from this offensive engine big time. They're looking hard to stop. First down, both wideouts to the right. Montana throws a bullet to the flat, and the reception's made at the 39, tackled at the 34. Tony Canadeo made the grab as the coverage seemed like they were in another world. Whose man is he? Time and time again, he makes a fantastic option of himself coming out of the backfield. Well, there are some runners that just have a knack for the passing game, and this guy's got it. Canadeo takes it off the toss and runs into traffic. Cody brings him down behind the line at the 35. McAllister Cody targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. That will be his fourth tackle, and he's hitting hard out there in the secondary. Well, he's making him think twice before going his direction. Montana throws this one over the middle, and it's tipped incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Moses Reese came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. Yet another big play by this defense. That was their fifth batted ball today. Yeah, you can see them start to anticipate the path of the throw the minute the quarterback winds up. Fourth down, and the field goal unit is on the field.
O'Brien launches the 52-yard attempt, and it's good. Michael O'Brien really gets the whole ball here, and he needed it. Watch. That's a powerful kick for three points, my friend. When he needs to, he can boot that thing. O'Brien boots the heck out of this one. Upchurch is coming out with it. Tackled at the 24. Rick Upchurch got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Gunslingers must feel like they need to score this timeout. This drive will start at their own 24-yard line. Means takes it for his eighth pass. Takes it upfield. Round to a halt at the 33. Natron Means played smart and used his blockers to perfection on that last play. Peter, what a nice pickup to get them into a second and short situation. Yeah, great play, and now they have a bunch of options on what to try next. Second down, and they line up with three tight ends. Lambert gains 10 yards on the play, and that brings up first down. Nothing's out with that game, Dan. These guys are the complete rushing package, and they'll run it on you all day if you let them. A well-designed play there, Peter, and they will move the chain. Great execution. First and ten from the Gunslingers, 23 yards. Means catches it in the flat and gains a couple. Jennings was shaken up earlier and we've gotten a report on his condition. What did they say, Peter? One of our guys managed to get a word with the team doctors and they said that he has fractured his leg. They said that his condition is pretty severe and that clearly he will not be returning to the game. Well, we'll hope for the best. Thanks, Peter. sideline and the reception is made past the markers for a first down Don Maynard has a guy shadowing him but still manages to make the catch he beats his man cold it's all about staking your turf he just couldn't get cranked up coming out of the tunnel waiting until the second quarter to make his first catch and you know that's a big confidence builder Dan now he should be able to settle into his game and contribute first down from the shotgun Means will get the carry on first down and he's out right, tackled at the 36. With the carry, the pickup of eight yards on the play. Cumbie with the tackle. Showtime. Second and two from the Gunslingers, 36 yards. just behind the line. Blaine Brown read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. That's his second tackle so far. Third and two. Ball at the 36 yard line. Rutledge makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. That will bring up fourth down. J.P. Rutledge couldn't have read that play any better if it was tattooed on the inside of his helmet. That was a fantastic job by the defense 
to stop what would have been a first down. I love to see Big D on third and short situations. Fourth down, defenses love to hear that from the refs. Lee lines up for the punt. Lee gets the ball and punts it away. Maggot takes it at the 10. Tackled at the 14. Your special teams unit is weak, man. The Sharks will start this drive all the way back at their own 14-yard line. Catches it in the flat hand is at the 25. Eventually tackled at the 29. Bobby Williamson is going to make a great run after the catch. Oh, there he snags the football, then fires up the Jets. That's big time talent. He did a good job getting his hands around the football, and then he just took off with it. Yeah, he's not running any tricky patterns, but can pick up the extra yardage when he needs to. First and ten. Canadeo will get the carry on first down and heads wide right, eventually tackled at the 47. It looks like we have an injury down on the field. As soon as we hear anything, we'll be sure to pass the information along to you. Daryl Salazar is the player injured. He's being looked at down on the field. Come on, D. Too much. Too 10. much. From Don't give him anything. Forty-seven yard. Joe catches the bullet out left, and that's good for a gain of five. Joe Montana zeroed in with the pass back there and leaves the two defenders empty-handed. Man, what ball placement. He's been on point with the short pass so far, Dan. That pattern's worked so well, we're probably going to see it over and over again. Well, why not, Peter? His receivers are open and making grabs, and nobody has really stopped him from doing it. Montana throws a bullet to the flat, and it's caught at the 50. Eventually shoved out at the 37. First down. Moses Reese makes the play here, but not fast enough. This one's going to count. Check it out. Yep, he pushes him out, but past the marker. They can't pin him down on second and long, and now it's first and 10. Very disappointing execution by this defense. will take the hand off and gets to the line. Tackled at the 35. Dave Meggett got some help on that one in the form of blocking, but he still couldn't make a play out of it. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Let's go. Second and eight from the Gunslinger. 35 yard. This one off to the right and picks up a couple. Penalty marker down on the play. Let's listen to the call. Neutral zone infraction, number 75. Defense, all-down penalty. Repeat, second down. 
Keith Millard was lined up on the ball and the ref called him on it. That's a neutral zone infraction. Second and three. Let's keep it going. Gains five on the play, and that will bring up first down. This is a very good run for a sizable gain, Dan. You can't ask for much more out of your rushing offense than that. Nice second down call, and they will move the chain. On offense, it was always a plus to avoid third down altogether, just like that. First and ten. Adeo bulldozes right of center and takes it upfield. Chase down at the 14. Tony Canadeo sticks close to his blockers here. And it pays off. First and ten. Let's finish this drive. It, catches it in the flat and loses yards on that one. McAllister Cody read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. Another tackle, and he's starting to fill up the stat book. He is dominating, Dan. So far, he's got seven tackles. Montana throws a heater right sideline and the catch is made for a gain of a couple. Joe Montana played this pass in beautifully, rendering the defense irrelevant. When you can make accurate throws like that, the whole field starts to open up for you. And that shows you that a lot of bullets can amount to as much or more than one big cannon shot. Well, he's forcing the deep coverage up a little more each short pass. The D better stay on their toes. They might get tricked. Sermon makes the sack at the 17. Fourth down coming up. Injury on the field. It looks like we have an injury down on the field. As soon as we hear anything, we'll be sure to pass the information along to you. Todd Reed goes down on this play. Ouch, man, that cannot feel good. No points here! We're going to bust to the line and block this kick. Fourth down, 13 yards to go. 17 yards. Logan on the hole. O'Brien kicks it from 34 yards. He knocks it through the upright. Michael O'Brien puts in an easy short one. A clean kick, no worries. That field goal makes him three for three out there. Hasn't missed one yet. And you can't coach that. Those Sharks are kicking off. Up to back to the return. O'Brien booms one downfield. Upchurch is coming out with it. Tackled at the 19. Rick Upchurch got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Gunslingers' offense has stalled late in their drives the past few times down. We'll see if they can finally score as they start this drive at their own 19-yard line. Brody lofts this one out to the left, and it's tipped! Incomplete! 
Salazar was shaken up earlier and we've gotten a report on his condition. What did they say, Peter? Well, the word is that he's suffering from a hairline fracture in his arm. They are fitting him with a brace as quickly as possible, but with time running low, it appears unlikely that he'll be able to return. Well, we'll hope for the best. Thanks, Peter. Second down, two wideouts on the field. the 14. The I want to see you tighten up that side of the line. Brody throws the pass and it's caught at the 32 and he's stopped right there. First down. Let's quickly get back to the sack on the last play. That was some ferocious defense. Oh yeah, Dan. Gino Marchetti is not the guy you want to see across from you if you're on the offensive line because he's going to leave some marks on you. He is one of the most rugged, physical players in the league and he'll do whatever it takes to get to the QB. Chews up four yards, and that brings up second down. Reed was shaken up earlier, and we've gotten a report on his condition. What did they say, Peter? The trainers have told us that he's got a sprained wrist. They are fitting him with a brace as quickly as possible, but with time running low, it appears unlikely that he'll be able to return. Well, we'll hope for the best. Thanks, Peter. Second down, three wideouts in the game. the line of scrimmage and will gain close to six. Pick up six yards on the play. Wilkerson with the tackle. This kind of pickup should be no problem for us. Third down and less than a yard. Means picks up a yard on the play and they will move the chain. Natron Means played smart and used his blockers to perfection on that last play. A nice play, and with only a short distance to the first, they put it together and make it happen. Yeah, third and short always looks easy, but it's not, Dan. That's good execution. Brody throws a heater, and the completion is good for six. Don Maynard had nobody on him. The quarterback saw it and got the ball to him. They've really been working that right side. He keeps popping open, and they keep throwing it to him. Well, Dan, the defense has to give up something, but this guy may force them to change strategies sooner than later. Second down, coming up on the 10th play of the drive. Green makes the catch on the right sideline and picks up four on the play. Brody throws a high, long one to the... The Gunslingers take their first time up. Oh, we got you back on your heels and we ain't gonna stop. First down, right. tight end to the left. First 
Green slams the rope right side, and that's a game of seven on the play. Lodi throws a big rainbow here, and it's intercepted. Where did he come from? The Sharks are going to try and capitalize on the interception. They'll start this drive at their own 20-yard line. will get the carry on first down and barely gets past the line of scrimmage for a negligible gain on the play. Second and nine. Ball at the 21 yard line. Calls him down in the backfield, and the clock will continue to run. Moses Reese targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. That will be his fourth tackle, and he's hitting hard out there in the secondary. Well, he's making them think twice before going his direction. is the incompletion. And that'll do it for the first half of this one. The Sharks enjoying the lead 16 to nothing. Okay, Dan, let's get this halftime show started. What do you have for us? A look inside the numbers from our first half and look at the discrepancy in sacks thus far. The Sharks are winning because of it. Let's see if they can keep up their dominance in the second half. Let's get started in this one early in the first quarter. Williamson found a little opening and that was all he needed. A five yard touchdown for the home team. The Sharks strike first and go up by seven. Later on in the first, Brody went up top on a third down play and he was able to find his man. Unfortunately, the drive stopped shortly afterwards and they had to punt it away. Midway through the first, the Sharks leading by seven. O'Brien is going to try to dial one in from very long distance. Plenty of leg to it though. He's got it. They're now up by ten. The Gunslingers, end of the first quarter, Brody would drop back and deliver a strike on this one. Unfortunately, they could not capitalize on the play. The Gunslingers down 10 to nothing. After driving 40 yards on six plays, O'Brien would be summoned for the long field goal try and his kick would be right through. A 53-yard field goal. The Sharks now up by 13. Midway through the second, ball at their own 28. Canadeo would get the carry here. Good blocking up front, and it helped to spring him. That set up a 35-yard field goal. Late into the second quarter, the Gunslingers down by 16. Butler would come up with the big play to kill a drive as he was able to step in front of a wayward pass for an INT. And that will do it. The Sharks are up big at the half. 16 to nothing. Excellent job, Dan. The Sharks get the ball first this half, and another score by them could really open up this game. They currently lead 16 to nothing. Let's go down to the field. Huggins boots the second half kickoff away. 
Maggot decides to take it out of the end zone. Great free. Dave Meggett got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Sharks offense takes the field, and they will start at their own 26-yard line. the first down and a whole lot more. 23 on the play. First down. James Lofton has a guy shadowing him but still manages to make the catch. He beats his man cold. It's all about staking your turf. That's yet another downfield shot to the same location. And this guy really has a feel for adjusting to the deep ball. You can't coach that. Montana floats this one out to the right side and the ball's caught at the 27, finally stopped at the 22. First down. 29 on the play. First down, Jordan. Our passing game is working, baby. Working! Let's go, D! Just like Breck! No more easy yard! Lofton pulls the lob down and is well past the markers for a first down. 16 yards on the play. First down. James Lofton does a great job here to battle three defenders. Oh, look at this. Whoa, triple covered, and he still comes down with the ball. That's wicked, Dan. This guy has been pretty much unstoppable this contest. You might think uh, you have him covered, but you don't. That's absolutely right, Dan. Solid effort from whistle to whistle. If the D doesn't step up now, they might not get a chance later on. Montana plays it out left side and it's caught for the touchdown. Pass complete to touchdown, touchdown. <laughs> James Lofton reels in the pass despite nearly getting squeezed by two defenders. There's the catch and the double coverage. They really didn't phase him there. Maybe they ought to send in a third. This is a take no prisoners kind of guy when he is in the red zone. Oh, after piling up some good yardage on the day, he makes a big play here for a score. the extra point and it's good O'Brien booms one downfield. Upchurch decides to take it out of the end zone. Big down at the 22. Rick Upchurch got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Gunslingers have had some problems sustaining drives. We'll see what they can do here as we start at their own 22-yard line. Marchetti tackles in for a short loss. Gino Marchetti read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. That's his third tackle of the game. Great. Second and 10 from the Gunslinger, 22 yards.
Brody tosses it down the left side and it's tipped incomplete. Ryan Brown gets a hand on this one. Right there, that's how you play D. That's the second time he slapped that ball out of there. Excellent read and reaction skills make him a nightmare to try and get the ball past. Third and 10 from the gunslinger, 22 yards. It's intercepted. The 31. Leroy Butler has this pass dead to rights all the way, Dan. He's got the interception and enough room to run the ball and give his offense a head start. Peter, you couldn't ask for more from him today. He has done his part. And then some. So far, he's got two interceptions. The Sharks are really in command and have yet another shot to score. Their offense takes the field and starts this drive at the 31-yard. Canadaya chews up four yards, and that will bring up second down. A pickup of four yards on the play. Cologne credited with the tackle. Don't buy that Second play action five. fake! Jones catches it left sideline and that's good for a gain of five. Brent Jones ran out of bounds there, well short of where he wanted to go. A decent play, and they'll now face third and short. That's the key, Dan. Make third down easy, and they did just that. Now they just need to convert. We'll see what they do. Balls him down in the backfield, and that takes them even farther away from the marker. Fourth down coming up. Dwight Jacobs would not be denied and dropped them for a huge loss. Big play. They come up with the big play, and on third and short, they force the fourth down. Yeah, they even caused a loss of yardage. What a time to come up big. Fourth down, and the field goal unit is on the field. O'Brien kicks from 39 yards out and squeezes it inside the right goal post. Michael O'Brien kicks the field goal, but watch how close the ball gets to the upright. Man, a few more inches and he'd have made the highlight reel. Not the way he would have wanted to, though. That's his fourth field goal of the game, and he has generally looked pretty good. He's doing his part, and that's what you want from a kicker. O'Brien kicks it away. Rick Upchurch got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. 25 yard. The Gunslingers were intercepted last time out. We'll see what happens here. We'll start at their own 25-yard line. Green didn't haul that one in, and it falls incomplete. Eric Green seemed to be the right guy for his quarterback, but he's unable to catch that ball over the middle. Potential for a quick first down, but no, they cannot hook up the pass. You can take a shot in that situation, and it's really not going to hurt you. That's a good call. That'll bring up second down.
Brody passes this one, and it's tipped. Incomplete. Leroy Butler came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. You know, Peter, if this were volleyball, that would have been the defense's sixth spike of the match. Yeah, the O keeps setting it up and the D keeps sending it back. We're shutting you down, baby. You can't move the ball. Twenty fourth down coming up. Five on the play. Sammy Sanchez got a nice sack in the backfield that sent this offense backpedaling. Spin class? <laughs> That's funny. As if I still work out. That'll be his first sack of the game. Lee winds up deep in his own territory to punt it away. Takes the snap and punts it away. Megan uses the punt at the 38. What down at the 42. Dave Megan didn't have much room to work with back there. The special team squad made sure he couldn't respond to that really nice punt. The Sharks will start this drive at their 42-yard line. this one way out right and maybe picks up one on the play. Tony Canadeo used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Not much there. It'll be second down. Gotta take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Second down from the eye. Canadeo will get stopped at the line, and that brings up third down. Tony Canadeo didn't get very far on that last play, and he even had the help of some blocking. I guess the defense had their number. Well, not much of a game there, and they will face third down. Third and long, too, Dan. Big play coming up. Cody makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. That will bring up fourth down. McAllister Cody came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. Oh, for... This is getting ridiculous. The offense just cannot get the ball past the reach of these defenders. You're right, Dan, and that's been one of the big stories of this game. Upchurch is deep to receive. Parker gets the ball and punts it away. Upchurch catches it at the 14. Dragged down at the 17. One back for a gain of three on the play. Ball will be placed around the 17-yard line. The gunslingers are fading fast and desperately need to score. Their offense will start this drive at their own 17-yard line. Means takes his 13th carry of the game and will end up losing a bunch here. Norman Meyer read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. Another tackle, and he's starting to fill up the stat book. He is dominating, Dan. So far, he's got five tackles and one sack. Plummer would not be denied and dropped them for a huge loss. 
big play. Good defense that's forced two losses in a row. No, no, no! Not today! No, sir! Gunslingers, 16 yard line. But tips it away on the coverage, incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Leroy Butler read that one right out of the receiver's break and denied it. That's the second time he slapped that ball out of there. Excellent read and reaction skills make him a nightmare to try and get the ball passed. Lee lines up to punt after the three and out. Gets the ball and punts it away. Maggot deals the punt at the 42. Back down at the 46. Dave Maggot got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The Sharks start this one on the center logo at their 46 yard line. Reed penetrates and makes the stop at the 43. Reed with the tack for a loss of three on the play. Todd Reed makes a nice stop in the backfield here, throwing his man into the turf behind the line. I guess the ball carrier's travel plans were canceled. Going anywhere. Pow, you're down. Nice tackle. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Adeo gets the call on second down and will end up losing a couple. Kawika Jasper would not be denied and dropped them for a huge loss. Big play. Air tight, Peter. That's exactly how they've played these past few downs. Yeah, they stopped the plays when they needed to, and they force a third and very, very long. Third down, 14 yards to go. Jones catches the heater right sideline and he's well short of the markers. It'll be fourth down. Brent Jones got a little progress, but not nearly enough to move the change. Getting only part of the way there is sort of like kissing your sister. Yeah, speaking of which, Dan, my sister asked me to tell you to cut it out. Hey! Why I oughta. Nice game, but not nice enough to get them the first. There was hope right. for a while back there, but it closed down in a hurry. Barker takes the long snap and punts it away. Upchurch fields it at the 12. Tackled at the 16. Run back for a gain of four yards on the play. Ball will be placed around the 16 yard line. The gunslingers haven't gotten much out of their offense recently and are looking to get back on track here. This drive begins at their own 16 yard line. Takes the hit up and runs into traffic. Underwood takes the hit in the backfield at the 15. Zach Underwood would not be denied and dropped him for a huge loss. Big play. That's his second tackle so far. Let's go. Second and 11 from the Gunslinger. 15 yards. bring up third down. Zach Underwood got a great jump on the play and brings the ball carrier down for a loss in the backfield. 
Nice defensive stop. They read that play the whole way, and they force a third in very, very long. Yeah, monstrous D, the past few downs for these guys. Dorber makes the catch out to the left, and he's well short of the markers. It'll be fourth down. Kenyatta Cumbie made the save, dropping the ball carrier before he could get to the markers. They stopped them cold, fourth coming up. Exactly what this defense needed to do. Lee gets ready to punt it away. Lee takes the snap and punts it away. Megan fields the punt at the 42. Locked down at the 44. Dave Mega got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The Sharks have had some trouble moving the ball recently. We'll see what they do on this drive that starts at their 44-yard line. Williamson pulls it in right side and gets past the markers for a first down. He picks up 12 yards on the play. First down. Charles. Bobby Williamson just couldn't have been expecting this. Three defenders on his tail. There had to be someone else open. Risky, but the throw paid off. Whoa, this is a nice surprise. The coaches have made him involved, resulting in yet another catch. Yeah, working your runner into the throwing scheme poses huge matchup problems for the defense, and you saw it there. Dale has his number called on first down and gains about three yards. With the carry. Gain of three on the play. Reed with the tackle. Second and seven from the Gunslingers, 41 yard line. Studwell takes him down back at the 44. Scott Studwell got a great jump on the play and brings the ball carrier down for a loss in the backfield. Nice defensive stop. Nice job eliminating any forward progress on that play. That will bring up a third and long. The Gunslingers, 44 yards. Montana lets it go down the right side, and the big catch is made with daylight in front of him, and he's in for the touchdown. Brent Jones keeps the party going here after hauling this one in. Well, Danny shows great hands and a little wiggle at the end of the play. Tough guy to bring down. This is a take-no-prisoners kind of guy when he is in the red zone. Oh, after piling up some good yardage on the day, he makes a big play here for a score. Here's the extra point, and it's good. O'Brien hits a boomer down the field. Upchurch decides to take it out of the end zone. Ground to a halt at the 21. A return of 21 on the play. Ball is spotted at the 21-yard line.
The Gunslingers take the field, and their running game hasn't generated much other than a big play here or there. We'll see how they fare as we start at their own 21-yard line. Means picks up a yard on the play, and that will bring up second down. Natron Means stuck close to his blockers, but the play folded quicker than an over-caffeinated origami artist. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Brody lobs this one way over the middle, and it's complete for the first down and a whole lot more. First down, gunslingers. John Brody has great accuracy on this throw. Yeah, he put the ball right where his guy could get it. And the defender couldn't. Nice toss. That's his fourth deep connection of the day. And at some point, the defense has to react. Well, it's like the secondary's been sleepwalking through this. Butler makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. Leroy Butler turned his hips to get into position and tip that ball away. Solid coverage. For the third time today, he gets enough of that pass to force it incomplete. Well, at this point, Dan, why do you keep trying to throw through him? That's very risky. Picks up about two, and that brings up third down. They get the first on third and long. John Brody makes a terrific completion in double coverage here. Wow, now that is one confident QB. Again, he uses the middle of the field to advance the football. And Dan, why not? Well, they, they found some seams, some crease right in the middle, and well, they feel they can take advantage of it at any time. Brody throws a heater right sideline, and the reception is made for a pickup of maybe a yard. Eric Green had a defender playing him close, but shook him at the last moment. You can't coach that. These guys make very great targets. Not to mention, it takes a whole defense Second to bring them down. Well, let me tell you something, Dan. When that bull starts roaming around in that china shop, things get broken pretty fast. Means will get stopped at the line, and that brings up third down. Kenyatta Cumby would not be denied and dropped him for a huge loss. Big play. That will be his fourth tackle, and he's hitting hard out there in the secondary. Well, he's making them think twice before going his direction. And that'll do it for the third quarter. The Sharks in command of this one, 33 to nothing. Ain't no chance they're gonna get this. Too many yards. Deny, deny, deny. Brody goes into the left sideline. The reception's made at the nine, brought down hard at the seven. It'll be first and goal. John Brody squeezes that ball through. Great placement. The defender is practically breathing down his neck. 
Yeah, you have to give credit to the receiver as well, Dan. It takes two guys to make a play like that That's work. How many times can this guy blast him downfield? He has been unstoppable today. Oh, it's like a war zone out there, Dan. The defense is just getting bombed right and left. He takes it for his 20th carry and searches for a hole. Stopped at the two. Plummer with the tackle. Dig in, fellas! Protect our end zone! Nobody crosses that goal line! Go Second and goal. Yeah. Sit. Dominant pass, dominant run, a lot of firepower on the field here. Fumble! They get it back! Elphage brings him down way behind the line at the eight. Bound for the king! Coach Edwards doesn't agree with the call, and we're going to see the red flag. The gunslingers are challenging whether it was a backward pass. Dan, we've got to look at the pass itself and see whether the ball is moving forward or backwards. That will tell us what happens to the call. After review, the play has been ruled a forward pass and therefore incomplete. The Gunslingers will not be charged with a timeout. Third down. Let's go, D. Let's keep it up. Fourth down, goal to go. Huggins will come in to attempt a field goal from the two yard line. McCurley will hold the kick. Huggins from 19 yards and it's good. Johnny Huggins has little trouble pooching this one through. Let's see it again. Yep, he knows that you aren't allowed to miss many of those in this league. Huggins booms one downfield. Megat decides to take it out of the end zone. Cut down at the 22. Dave Megat got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Sharks got into the end zone last time they had it, and they're looking to do it again. They'll start at their own 22-yard line. Is it in the flat, and yeah. that will be a gain of three yards. Jacobs. Dennis Watts had a defender closing in, but was still able to haul that one in. Great execution. Another short, quick strike, and the defense looks helpless to stop this ball control strategy. Yeah, it's a great game plan this offense has been executing, no doubt about it. Montana throws this one right sideline, and it's tipped incomplete. 
Moses Reese calculates the pattern right off the line, locates the ball. Oh, just gets a finger on it. That broke up a sure completion. Oh, for... This oh. is getting ridiculous. The oh. offense just cannot get the ball past the reach of these defenders. You're right, Dan, and that's been one of the big stories of this game. Third down, three wideouts Third in the game. From your Sharks, 25 yard. Let's go, D! That's what we stand for! Week back, week back, week back! I got two, I got two over here! What? Snags the dart right sideline, and they get the first on third and long. Wesley Walker has some company on this play, but he still makes the catch. That's good concentration and focus. It's worth another look. Oh, maybe they should have triple covered him there. It's about time. Three incompletions in a row before they finally connect. Yeah, perseverance can be both a blessing and a curse. They finally got that one to him, but boy, did it take some effort. Williamson will get stopped at the line, and that will bring up oh, second down. Williamson. Tackle made by Studwell. No gain on the play. Second and nine. Ball at the 44-yard line. Lofton holds in the pass and he's looking for room. Hunted down at the 43. Bring it on! First down, Sharks. First and 10 from the Gunslinger, 43 yard line. Day takes it off the toss and will end up losing a bunch here. Chuck Sermon saw where that play was going right away and stopped it cold for a loss of yardage. A beautiful hit on that one. He really brought some thunder with him. And he rained on the offense's hopes of gaining some yards. In fact, the rest of this drive may get a little overcast. That will be his fourth tackle of the contest. Reese tips it away on the coverage, incomplete. Moses Reese turned his hips to get into position and tipped that ball away. Solid coverage. That's the second time he slapped that ball out of there. Excellent read and reaction skills make him a nightmare to try and get the ball passed. All out. All of us are going all out. This drive ends right here. Let's go. Third and 14. Montana makes the long, long pass, and it's tipped. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Moses Reese turned his hips to get into position and tipped that ball away. Solid coverage. For the third time today, he gets enough of that pass to force it incomplete. Well, at this point, Dan, why do you keep trying to throw through him? That's very risky. Barker gets ready to punt it away. Upchurch. Here I come, punters. I'm coming. I'm going to block the punt. Barker gets the ball and punts it away. Derek Gill is going to get under one gorgeous, stupendous punt here. Look at this baby. Reels it in and then can't get far before he's dropped. Perfect job by the special teams. Great kick, great coverage. The Gunslingers find themselves in dangerous territory and will start this one way back at their own four-yard line.
Rutledge takes him down back at the one. J.P. Rutledge targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Gary Plummer comes off the line like a hungry rhino looking for that safety. And he gets it, hitting him in the end zone for two. You can't coach that. Good defense that's forced two losses in a row. Lee sends it downfield. Maggot takes it at the 19. 35, dragged down at the 38. The Sharks had their last drive stall at the tail end. We'll see if they can keep momentum throughout this one, which starts at their 38-yard line. Go! Grabs the fastball over the middle, and he picks up nine. Brent Jones had three guys covering him, but look what happens. Incredible catch. These guys make very great targets, not to mention it takes a whole defense to bring them down. Well, let me tell you something, Dan. When that bull starts roaming around in that china shop, things get broken pretty fast. Chases him down and drops him back at the 45. Ben Clay targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. Peter, he's been lighting up the defensive side of the ball today and getting some nice numbers out of it. You bet. So far, he's got five tackles. Third down with the tight end right. Blocker catches it over the middle, and they convert on third down. Wesley Walker had three guys covering him, but look what happens. Incredible catch. It takes a lot of courage to make your living over the middle, I'll tell you, but we've right. seen him there several times today. Yeah, that's a guy who's willing to sacrifice his body to make his quarterback look good. Takes it for his 20th carry and maybe picks up one on the play. Tony Canadeo stuck close to his blockers, but the play folded quicker than an over-caffeinated origami artist. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Hoofkin catches it left sideline and picks up four on the play. Joe Montana made a risky throw here, Dan. It worked out for him, but he had to slip it through practically the entire defense. Ooh, scary. He's been on point with the short pass so far, Dan. That pattern's worked so well, we're probably going to see it over and over again. Well, why not, Peter? His receivers are open and making grabs, and nobody has really stopped him from doing it. Third down with a split backfield. Montana rifles this one hard over the middle, and it's tipped. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Scott Studwell came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. I mean, he's just unconscious out there. Oh. And a couple of those batted balls were almost intercepted. Dan, you can't coach that. He has rare instincts and incredible hand-eye coordination. Barker gets ready to punt it away. Barker gets the ball and punts it away. <laughs> the
The Gunslingers' offense takes the field and are again starting in a tough spot. This drive will begin at their own three-yard line. goes right up the middle and barely gets past the line of scrimmage for a negligible gain on the play. Natron Means used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. He's not made much headway up the middle, although it's not for lack of trying, and that's for sure. They can't get effective blocking there. You gotta go elsewhere. Lambert has his number called on second down and picks up a couple. We have a penalty marker on the play. Let's get the call from the field. Holding, number 79, off end, top the distance to the ball, and he's fouled the foul. Repeat, second down. Jim Lachey held his man on that play, and hey, you can't do that. That was offensive holding any day of the week. Time, D. It's time to make a play. Let's get those two points. Go time. Second and eleven. Zach Underwood comes off the line like a hungry rhino looking for that safety. And he gets it, pinning him in the end zone for two. You can't coach that. He's now up to six tackles. Lee kicks it away. Maggot hauls it in at the 17. 35, breaks the tackle, tackled at the 38. The Sharks, stalled early last drive, will have to see what happens here. We'll start at their 38-yard line. Montana zings it to the right side and it's tipped incomplete. Penalty marker down on the play. Let's listen to the call. Neutral zone infraction, number 63, defense, dog yard penalty, repeat, first down. Leroy Selman had crossed the plane made by the tips of the football on that last one, so he got the call for a neutral zone infraction. First and five, ball at the 43-yard line. Down! Sit! Watch count! Watch count! Rhino! Rhino! Weak back! Weak back! I got to come over here! <laughs> Williamson will get the handoff and heads left. Tackled at the 47. Williamson with the carry. He picks up four yards on the play. Studwell with the tackle. Watch out for the Second play action! One. Ball at the 47 yard. Down! Side, wing left! Rip, rip! I got two, I got 56! Listen up! Goal 26! And Dale loses two, and that brings up third down. Scott Studwell would not be denied and dropped him for a huge loss. Big play. Another tackle, and he's starting to fill up the stat book. He is dominating, Dan. So far, he's got five tackles. Third down, two receivers to the left. Chuck Sermon has planted the ball carrier in the turf short of the markers. But, you know, Dan, the only thing that's going to grow is this D's morale. The defense didn't budge on that play, and they force a fourth down. 
Barker lines up for the punt. Sharks have selected to punt. Upchurch is deep to receive. Oh, lay it all out on this punt block. Barker gets the snap and punts it away. Upchurch fields the punt at the 12. Brought down at the 16. That return went nowhere, baby. Yeah. 16 yard line. The gunslingers are way down late in the game. They'll need some magic as they start this drive at their own 16-yard line. Barry catches the heater left sideline and is well past the markers for a first down. Tracks him down and sacks him for a loss at the 29. 29 yard. Powell tips it away on the coverage, incomplete. Derek Howell knocked that pass down, and he made sure the only one to touch the football was him. Oh, for this oh. is getting ridiculous. The oh. offense just cannot get the ball past the reach of these defenders. You're right, Dan, and that's been one of the big stories of this game. Brody and it's caught at the 32, and he's stopped right there. Cumbie will be credited with the tackle. That will bring up fourth down. Kenyatta Cumbie made the save, dropping the ball carrier before he could get to the markers. That's tackle number six for him. Good game so far. Definitely. Catches the hard throw and... Zach Underwood makes his presence known on this one. He's going to haunt the ball carrier's dreams for a while. Oh, big tackle on fourth. That's how you stop a conversion. They don't get the fourth down conversion they needed, Peter, although I don't think they should have punted it away. No, that far behind, they are definitely in go-for-broke mode. Unfortunately, they got broke. The Sharks take the field and will probably look to take time off the clock. They'll start at the 44-yard line. Maggot has his number called on first down and will gain close to six. We have a penalty marker on the play. Let's get the call from the field. Holding, number 68, offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. William Murphy clearly held his man back there. Offensive holding was the right call. First in a long 20 from your Sharks 46 yard line. Maggot gains five on the play, and that will bring up second down. Cup of five on the play. Reese with the tackle. Second down, just a single receiver on the field. Megat barges off right guard and picks up eight yards on the play. Megat 
with the catch. Gain of eight yards on the play. Sermon with the catch. Nice gain on this baby. Look at him eat up the yardage here. They got some, but they'll need more than that if they want to convert on this third down. Yeah, they have a ways to go, Dan. They would have loved a few more yards out of that play. Third and seven. It, takes it off the toss and gets past the line. No one in front of him. The 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Dan, check out all the yards he snarfs up here. Yes, snarfs. That's an old football term. <laughs> Tell you what, though, this is a great play. That's the first time he's seen the end zone, and you know it was going to happen sooner or later. Oh, he expects to have something under that TD stat at the end of every game. the point after and it's good O'Brien kicks it away. Upchurch decides to take it out of the end zone. Tackled at the 22. Rick Upchurch took it out of the end zone, and while it may have been a little risky, he gets out close to the 20, so it all comes out in the wash on that play. We're going with gun. Straight 50 AZ cross. Focus on this one. Break. The gunslingers start this drive of the game from well in their own territory, and the clock at 143. Brody zings it to the right side, and the ball is caught at the 26. Second down, and the clock is now at 1.37. Howell makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. Derek Howell turned his hips to get into position and tipped that ball away. Solid coverage. That's the second time he slapped that ball out of there. Excellent read and reaction skills make him a nightmare to try and get the ball passed. Third down and five wide receivers take the field. Brody rifles it out left side. The gunslingers take their first time up. Keep the intensity. Don't let him get it. Come on. We got to stop him here. We got to stop him here. Fourth down, and they're going for it. Slingers will take a timeout. That's their second. John Maynard had three guys covering him, but look what happens. Incredible catch. Peter, that's a nice first down for posterity, but it'll take a lot more than that to turn this game around with so little time left. Yeah, like divine intervention, maybe. 
First down. First down and four wideouts in the game. Brody fires this one over the middle and it's incomplete. Rick Upchurch did everything he could to create an opening for the quarterback to throw into. Looked like that one could have been completed. Wow, you don't see that very often. His first drop of the game. Well, Dan, usually he's Mr. Dependable out there, and you have to wonder if he heard some footsteps. Second down. Right. The clock Second is stopped at 111. Maggot makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. Flag down on the play. Let's get the call. Pass interference. Number 30. Defense. 15-0 Automatic first down. Dave Meggett manhandled that receiver back there like a puppy playing with a chew toy, Dan. And he rightly got slapped with defensive pass interference. First down from the shotgun. From the Sharks, 31 yard. Brody just rushes this one, and the catch is made for the first. The clock continues to tick down. First down, the clock is now at 102. Raymond Berry had all the time in the world on this play, Danny. He could have made himself a sandwich while he was waiting for the ball. <laughs> Always back to the food, Peter. Can't you think of anything else? Oh, well, let me see. Uh, no, I can't. Uh-huh. This is a take-no-prisoners kind of guy when he is in the red zone. Oh, after piling up some good yardage on the day, he makes a big play here for a score. Here's the extra point, and it's good. The extra point is good. The gunslinger is set for an onside kick. Huggins pooches it. Gumby gathers it up at the 46. Tackled at the 46. Moore was in on the tackle. Kenyatta Cumby is quick to react when the onside kick comes bouncing his way. Watch him move. And get the football before the kicking team has a shot. It's all about reflexes. They can't bring down the onside kick. Pretty aggressive play calling there, though. Well, the offense is like a one in four chance of recovering uh -huh. those, but they knew the risks. a knee and that will do it
third and 13 from the Gunslingers, 49 yard line. Rogan takes a knee and the clock will tick down. And that is going to do it for this one. The Sharks come out on top 44 to 10. With this one in the books, let's take a look back at some of the action. That was an exciting game. So let's not waste any time in getting to the highlights in our post-game show. Let's get started in this one early in the third quarter. Montana would find his target on this one. A 29-yard play that set up a home team touchdown. The Sharks have opened it up and now lead by 23. The Gunslingers still early in the third. Butler shows some great awareness here as he gets himself into position to pick this one off. Still early in the third, the Sharks out in front by 23. O'Brien is summoned for the field goal attempt. Good snap, good spot, good kick. Hey, three points. They have opened it up and now lead by 26. The Sharks have it again. Montana went to work on third down and he was able to find his man. A 44 yard touchdown for the home team. The Sharks ahead 33 to nothing. Brody went to the air trying to convert on third down and he found his man. That set up a no-brainer 20-yard field goal. The Gunslingers trying to make something happen and are now down by 30. Later on in the fourth quarter, Montana went to the air trying to convert on third down and he found his man. Unfortunately, the drive stopped shortly afterwards and they had to punt it away. Midway through the fourth, the Gunslingers back by 30. Plummer would break through with a big play here as he shot through the line and was able to wrap his man up in the end zone for a safety. The Gunslingers, middle of the fourth, Underwood would break through with a big play here as he shot through the line and was able to wrap his man up in the end zone for a safety. The Gunslingers back 37 to three. Brody would find his target on this one. Unfortunately, they could not capitalize on the play. Still late in the fourth quarter, the Sharks with the ball at the 42. Maggot got the call on third down and he did not disappoint. A 41-yard touchdown for the home team. Late into the fourth quarter, the Gunslingers trailing by 41. Brody connected with his man on this one. And that will do it. The Sharks win big, 44 to 10. Okay, here's your 2K Sports player of the game. Joe Montana showed us why he's one of the best. Well, he was the best player on the winning team. It's as simple as that. We'll see if he's able to keep up this high level of play in the games ahead. For my partner, Peter O'Keefe, this is Dan Stevens saying goodbye until next time.